All right, so the question we're going to answer in this video is <clears throat> what is the secret to factoring? Um, over the years, as I've taught algebra, factoring seems to be one area where um, a lot of people struggle. So um, let's go through the example that's on the screen and I'll explain this as I would in class and then maybe uh, from how we work the example we can maybe we can figure out together what the the key to being able to factor is so um, in this video I am assuming that you have at least tried some factoring or um, maybe you've talked about it in your class and it just didn't make sense or something like that so uh, you've got a trinomial on your screen and um, we talk about how all trinomials will factor into a product of binomials and basically what we are doing is our FOIL method you should have done or looked at the FOIL method in your classes first outside inside last uh, but when we factor we're doing the FOIL method backwards so it's kind of like we're unfoiling this trinomial right so you know when you foil you multiply the first by the first right so first times first has to give us x squared so you can almost always start with x and x and then since the leading coefficient of this trinomial is one that makes life a little bit easier the next question we might think about is what number goes here and here well that would be the L part of our FOIL method multiplying the last two numbers and we can see that those last two numbers must multiply to minus 30 so we have limited options now this might be the part that's a little confusing to some people is that you have options and it's not always a hundred percent clear exactly which option to choose but the way you do have to start is by thinking about what numbers multiply to 30 let's don't worry about just yet let's don't worry about that it's negative 30 let's just think about the number 30 and what pairs of numbers multiply to 30 we could have 1 and 30, um, we could have 2 and 15, we could have 3 and 10, uh, and we could have 5 and 6, right? And I think that exhausts all of our options of numbers that will multiply to 30. Now. Sorry, now um, I stepped away for just a second there. Um, now we, we have to also remember that this 30 in our trinomial is negative. So, right, so we can have negative 1 and positive 30, or it could be positive 1 and negative 30. Uh, it could be negative 2 and positive 15, uh, or vice versa and so on right so that means that we have lots of options right how in the world are we ever gonna know which pair to use in our factoring well the trick here is that not only do the numbers need to multiply up to negative 30 they need to add together to this middle coefficient negative 7 right so we start looking at these pairs of numbers and we say is there any combination of adding 1 and 30 adding or subtracting 1 and 30 that would possibly result in negative 7 no because if we did 1 minus 30 that's negative 29 if we did 30 minus 1 that's positive 29 right and this middle number is not 29 look at this pair of numbers right 2 minus 15 
gives us negative 13. 15 minus 2 gives us um, positive 13. Right, so in other words, we're looking for a pair of numbers whose difference is either 7 or negative 7. And if we look at this pair, aha, now if we take 3 and subtract 10, that gives us the number we were looking for in the middle there, negative 7. Right, so this tells us that the pair of numbers we're looking for is 3 and negative 10. Right, so that gives me what I need for the factorization. Of course, these two wouldn't work because the difference between them is just 1. Right, so I'm going to use positive 3 and negative 10. And now, of course, you can check that by using your FOIL method. So your check would be use your FOIL method first, outside, inside, last. And then as long as these middle two terms add up to the one that you started with, which they do, negative 7x, then you've got the correct factorization. So a lot of times this method for factoring is called trial and error and maybe that's what's kind of confusing about factoring is there is not necessarily a set method but let's go back and think about what was the key here. The key to being able to do this in my opinion is this arithmetic. We've got to be able to think about pairs of numbers that multiply to 30 and also pairs of numbers that add up to negative 7. So the trick isn't really that profound. The trick or the secret to being able to factor is being good at your arithmetic. So it's it's you've got to be good at the arithmetic without having a calculator in your hand. So really knowing your multiplication tables and really understanding how to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. So being able to do 7 minus 10 and knowing without even thinking about it really that that's negative 3. Of course we didn't do this exact arithmetic but that type of arithmetic. Right, so the key is if you're not good with multiplying positive and negative numbers or adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers you've got to go back and practice that first. In my opinion that's the secret to factoring because if you are good at this arithmetic and can do it in your head put the calculator down and do this arithmetic in your head then you will I think inherently become good at factoring. Um, now, of course, I can create more videos with more examples of factoring, but if we're not good at the arithmetic first, what good do any more examples do? Right? So that's my two cents on how to be good at factoring.